the hello there. There we go. Thank you for listening to Winds of Praise. Oh, we are excited to be here this morning, and I'm super excited because I didn't expect Ernie. This is Scott Albright, by the way, and today is Friday, November 20th. I didn't expect Ernie Moquin to show up, and I was expecting Colleen. And who did come in first is Ernie. Hello, Ernie. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you had some change of plans. I'm sad, but I'm happy. And Colleen, you've been away for a while, and just great to see you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Awesome. Good to be here. Oh, man. And, uh, Man, God is so good, and it's just incredible. In the midst of all this garbage that's going on, God is great. Oh, my gosh, yeah. And we know that. Well, my, the, the scripture, one of the Proverbs that I literally hold on to my entire life, I, I, I speak it to myself every day. It says that man plans his way, but God orders his steps. And this was one of the hardest decisions I've ever had to make. Because if you've listened for any time, my literal, if anybody asks, what's your favorite thing in the whole world to do? Literally, at the top of my list is going out to the desert on Thanksgiving with my friends and my family. There's nothing I love more. I mean, I could have sailed all over the place, and I'm sure sailing around the world would be great. But still, that would be my favorite thing to do. But my wife is not able to go, and that was hard. And then, of course, with all the COVID things and everything they're doing down in California, I, I decided... Uh, it was a very hard decision, but the peace of God is so uh, <laughs> intense. And the flip side of the coin is I wanted to put my wife first. I was reading through Ephesians and everything on, you know, and really a marriage relationship is a mirror image of Christ in the it church. Yeah. And I have a tendency to, because my wife is so awesome and she's so giving and caring um, and self-sacrificing that I take that for granted. And I've sort of been taking that for granted over the last few months. And so all these things going on and I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And as much as... And she, Cindy said, go ahead, you can go, you know. And uh, But the Lord said, no, I want you to stay and just be with your wife. And, and President's Day is coming up, so we can go out to the desert in February, and then we can all go together. Yeah. So it is, But, you know, the thing is you want to do something, but when you're obedient, the peace of God, again, that surpasses all understanding, just nukes on you. And so one more quick little thing, Scott. <laughs> you're going to love this. So nothing was working on my motorhome. My refrigerator wasn't working. Whoa. My hot water heater wasn't working. Whoa. And the um, and the refrigerator and the, the furnace wasn't working. I was like, Ooh. wow, all this stuff just went out like the last time I was using it. It's like, and so I, but after I made, and I was trying to figure out what was going on, and my word on her, after I made that decision, I called Cindy, I, told, I called my kids, and everything was cool. And, uh. I went back in there. I just started jiggling stuff. Every single thing came back to life yesterday after I was obedient to the Lord. And, and he said, Ernie, and that was my confirmation that I made the right choice. The free will that God still gives us free will. When we ask God to do something, he still, it's us up to us to choose to follow what he's telling us to do or our own way. But when we do choose his way, even if it's a self-sacrificing thing, which I don't need a pat on the back for that, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh my gosh. And then the blessings are even more manifold. Okay, I'll be quiet now. Go, Colleen, actually, it's your turn. Actually, as you were saying that, I was thinking uh, about the devotion that I read this morning. And I can't quote the exact scripture, but it basically is saying that God loves to chase us down with his blessings. And in the devotion, it was talking about that as Christmas is coming and, and as children maybe you know maybe they've gone to some function and there's like a Santa with like a whole bag of, of gifts all wrapped in, in wonderful beautiful colors and how exciting to give out each one of the gifts and that God is even more that way for yeah. us his children he loves to give us good gifts oh man and he's so good and he does that. I'm I'm uh, charged to speak on Sunday at our little church in Salette, and I've been pondering Hosea because there's a reference uh, to Hosea from Jacob when he laid down and had a sleep, a dream of the angel, the angels going up the ladder and coming down, and at the top of the ladder was God. And in the New Testament, it says Jesus Christ is the ladder. He is our answer. But Hosea. Uh, he God said to the Hosea to the prophet, I want you to marry a prostitute and she's going to be unfaithful to you. But you'll know what it's like for me because I love you so much. Yet my people are they follow after idols and I bless them and they squander it. And I think that's kind of what we're going through now. But God wants to bless us more yeah. than he wants to judge us. I mean, we talk a lot about judgment and you have your own choice to make. And indeed, that's true. And there will be a point when judgment comes. But now is a time when God wants to bless you with his 
blessings Amen. and and they are so great just as you alluded to ernie yep. and uh, i'm so glad to see both of you here at the radio station yeah at one point this morning i thought well maybe neither of them will be here and i'll just be by myself and here you are and it's the blessing of the lord so. yeah but you're never by yourself because right it says we're two or more are gathered so when you're alone with well, the lord it's that. the father son holy spirit so there's four of you right there I when know. you're alone <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's talk about where you guys have been um we by the way we're here live on the radio station 98.7 fm and uh we're here to pray actually but it's yeah. it's hard to uh pray and we get so excited, we just want to share the blessings of God. But we're streaming at windsofpraise.com. Uh, God is so faithful, and he will continue to be faithful. I talked to Don Heist this morning. Um, Don, who's in North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah, he's uh, visiting family. Finally got away yeah. and left things into your charge, Ernie, hands, yep. at Yaquinta Chapel and uh, Joe Jonkus. We haven't burned the building down yet. And we're talking about, you know, we've been talking a long time about maybe new buildings, whatever, uh, improvements with the radio station. And, and God just moves, you know, just a tiny little bit at a time here because of just the yep. way we are and uh, he will be exalted. But anyway, we're here to pray, and if you'd like to contact me and get in touch with us right now, my phone is 541-270-7855. And this is Scott Albright. Uh, I'm with Colleen McNeil and Ernie Moquin. Yeah. And uh, Colleen, you've been visiting family, so you've been gone for like a couple weeks, and it's still good to see you again. Oh, yeah. thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. In fact, actually, um, our son-in-law, Brett, who's uh, a career Air Force fellow um, at Kingsley Field in Klamath Falls and our daughter uh, Darcy uh, they went back to uh, Nashville Tennessee and to Athens Alabama uh, to kind of check out he's got uh, 30 years in the wow. Air Force wow. and so he Good will be him. he will be retiring in about 16 months and um, they were looking at um, a couple of kind of contractor kind of uh, positions that uh, may uh, may be something that will come up for them. And so it was fun to spend time with our 20-year-old granddaughter and our 10-year-old oh granddaughter. Oh, wonderful. And usually, usually what it is is, you know, I'm there and I, you know, do like breakfast, lunch, and dinner and drive everybody wherever they need to go and, you know, uh -huh. just do all that stuff. Well, it wasn't that way this time. Wow. I mean, the girls wanted to take turns making meals. And so I just had to eat meals. And they oh, made all kinds you. of wonderful things. Or it was like, you know, our 20-year-old granddaughter chauffeured us wherever we wanted to go. Oh, how fun. And, how, was, and it, how, how was her driving? Oh, awesome. Awesome. She's a fantastic young lady. Nice. And, and then what I noticed was that at first I didn't quite know how to respond, but it was like the Lord just said, listen, they want to love you and they want to pamper you. So like, in other words, see, they wanted to chase me down with blessings. Yeah. And so one, one night, um, our 20 year old granddaughter had called her favorite Italian restaurant, made reservations, you know, paid for our dinner just had a wonderful um, evening out. So it was like all of these incredible blessings just flowing my direction. Wow, that's so wonderful. Uh, Colleen, the phone call was uh, a direction for me to ask you, do you have an upcoming trip to next month to somewhere? Well, <laughs> actually, <laughs> actually, um, yes, I have been invited uh, to go to Washington, D.C., to the Christmas, um, you know, the White House and Christmas. And so I'm I'm just kind of in awe. I mean, I hardly know. You've been invited to go to the White House for Christmas. Yes. Uh, <laughs> who, I mean, so, isn't God you... <laughs> awesome? And right here in our little crazy radio station, we have this wonderful woman of God, a prayer warrior. And, you know, so don't take for granted the small things in life God calls you to do, you know. Um, cause he, exactly what we're talking about. He's going to, I mean, and, we, and we're all part of this when we pray for Colleen. I'm, okay. I'll shut up. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I just kind of went, in fact, yeah. the, the young man who invited me and made all of the arrangements, I, I said, are you, are you kidding with me? And he said, no, I'm not. <laughs> and, um, and so anyway, I just thought, 
wow, I mean, I'm just an ordinary person in Newport, Oregon, mm -hmm. but yet I could hear back about five or six years ago when Rabbi Daniel, um, you know, commissioned me into Beth Israel International Ministries, and I remember the words that he said. He said, this young lady will travel, 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 and I thought, there you go. God, I mean, how in the world do you do these things? I just stand in awe. And uh, I should add that Rabbi Daniel has asked, and you have said yes, to become the International Communications Director uh, for... Yeah. That, is that part of the reason why you're going is because of that connection? No. I no? Know. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a, this is gonna be exciting to see what the Lord does with you and who you're going to meet. Maybe you'll get to meet our wonderful president. Uh, that would be incredible. I mean, you know, you never but know what knows? God has in, in mind. I already... Um, a wonderful couple. In fact, I so admired this couple because probably about six, seven years or more, maybe could be as long as 10. Anyway, um, Don and Al Annabelle Forey from Washington, D.C. at that time. Um, he was a businessman, Christian businessman. And God said, I want you to go to the state of Oregon and pray for Oregon. And he thought, go where? You know, yeah. and so anyway, he and his wife, Annabelle, came to Oregon and they went to all 36 counties and marched around the courthouse at each county and prayed for that county to belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then they hooked up with the National Day of Prayer leaders and Pray Oregon leaders here. And year after year, they travel like oh, I don't know, 4,500, 5,000 miles all around to all 36 counties. And now they have, you know, prayer connectors, you know, throughout the entire state. And so we see um, just this prayer movement. And so I was just really thanking the Lord for Donald and Annabelle. And so with my trip to Washington, D.C., they said, we're going to connect you with a bunch of the prayer warriors in Washington, D.C. Oh, so awesome. I'm really kind of stoked. Yeah. <laughs> well, would you lead us in prayer? This is uh, a time of prayer and yeah. a time when we need it. We are in the balance and we don't know how things are going to turn out, but we know that God is going to always be victorious. His kingdom will never end. It can't be destroyed. Uh, kingdoms will rise and fall. That's without a doubt. Yeah. And, and leaders come and go according to the Lord's will. He will appoint leaders and, and pull them down. But I'm reminded um, as I went back and I was reading my ordination papers from, um, from Beth Israel Ministries, and it talked about pushing back the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. right. And for a long time, you know, I mean, I could read those words, but maybe I didn't understand them real well. Mm -hmm. But I realize, wow, God, you have actually given us authority. Yes. Yes. We have the authority uh -huh. to bind things on earth. Uh -huh. Then they'll be bound in heaven and we can loose things on earth and they'll be loosed in heaven. And so it's kind of like as I look at our country, I go, no, Lord, we are not going to stand for the enemy to try to Jesus steal name. what you have That's already right. given right. to us. Yes, and amen. yes, Beautiful. back in 1960, whatever it was, you know, when things began to like erode and, and I didn't notice, I didn't pay attention. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. just kind of tolerated what was mm -hmm. going on. And so as we've repented and turned away from those crazy places where we've been napping in the garden or, you know, sleeping or whatever we've been doing, Father, we just want yes, to thank, thank you, you and praise you mm -hmm. that this country was yes, founded Lord. on you. Yes. You who are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And Jesus, we thank you that you went to the cross for each and every one of us and your blood was shed for us. And I think back to like George Washington, the very first president of the United States of America. And at that time, the Capitol wasn't in Washington, D.C. It was in New York. And as soon as he was inaugurated, he and his cabinet walked across the street to the little St. Paul's Church, the only little building that seemed to have stood after 9-11. And all of them knelt on their knees and they dedicated this 
country to you. Mm -hmm. And I know that those prayers didn't evaporate someplace. And so we're agreeing with those prayers that this country, the United States of America, will be one nation under God. And so we just tell you, Father, We've been busy building our houses, our ministries, um, you know, our fun things, our idols, whatever in the world we've been doing. And we realize, oh, we have turned our faces away from you. We've drifted away. And all I can say is thank you. Thank you for your mercy, mercy, mercy. Thank you that we didn't earn it. We didn't deserve it, but thank you that you want to draw us back to you. And across this nation, I remember the time, in fact, as they were playing the song, The Days of Elijah, I remember at that that prayer rally that we had here in Newport, Oregon, 17, 18 years ago, whatever it was, and you said, if we would make it like a drink offering, you wanted to pour out rivers of living water across our nation that Mm -hmm. there would be a flood of you pouring out across our nation and many 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 souls millions of souls would come to know you not only in the united states but also around the world so we want to thank you and praise you for what you're doing thank you father that you are revealing truth like you tell us that you lead us into all truth so we thank you and praise you that you're revealing truth and father we don't care which you know party it is we just are asking for your truth to be seen Mm -hmm. and that father that if there's deceit and deception Mm -hmm. and whatever that that would be torn down and that the truth your truth would be revealed in jesus name amen. amen amen Good um, stuff. The prophet Hosea in chapter 1, verse 11 says, Then the people of Judah and Israel will unite together. They will choose one leader for themselves, and they will return from exile together. What a day that will be. And then in uh, Hosea 2.14, the Lord's love for the unfaithful. He says, But then I will win her back once again. I will lead her into the desert and speak tenderly to her there. I will return her vineyards to her and transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. She will give herself to me there as she did long ago when she was young, when I freed her from her captivity in Egypt. When that day comes, says the Lord, you will call me my husband instead of my master. O Israel, I will wipe the many names of Baal from your lips and you will never mention them again. On that day, I will make a covenant with all the wild animals and the birds of the sky and the animals that scurry along the ground so that they will not harm you. I will remove all weapons of war from the land, all swords and bows, so you can live unafraid in peace and safety. I will make you my wife forever, showing you righteousness and justice, unfailing love and compassion. I will be faithful to you and make you mine, and you will finally know me as the Lord. In that day, I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the sky as it pleads for clouds, and the sky will answer the earth with rain. Then the earth will answer the thirsty cries of the grain, the grapevines and the olive trees, and they will turn, and they will in turn will answer, Jezreel, God plants. At that time, I will plant a crop of Israelites and raise them for myself. I will show love to those I called not love, and to those I called not my people, I will say, now you are my people, and they will reply, you are our God. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> that's it Hosea. Just, that's just too Go good. Ahead. It's just awesome. No, that's overwhelming. That's my point. Is And we're grafted in, you know, that's us, oh. the, the, us Gentiles. And God, as we talked about before we opened the mic, God loves to show mercy and he doesn't yeah. want to judge. No. He he loves he to He just wants us it's it's like when you think about your children, mm-hmm. you know, even like when your children do something <coughs> disgusting. I mean, you know, you'd like to perhaps like <laughs> choke them, you know? <laughs> but it's like you you <laughs> you love you love them and it's like when they turn, you know, it's like the prodigal like yeah. I, I look at that and I think the joy in our hearts as they turn back 
to the right way. And that's what we want to be seen in God's eyes. It's like, Abba, Daddy, Father, thank you so much for the incredible love and mercy and grace. And yes. thank you, Jesus, thank you. that you, you were obedient to the point of death. Our salvation cost you absolutely everything. Right. And we just raise our hand to praise you and thank you and worship you. Mm. Amen. Yeah. Well, I love sitting in here because we have a poster of the passion, you know, and it's such a, a stark reminder of oh. what he did for us, you know. So it's just beautiful. I just, I, I don't think we're fully going to understand well, it till we're there. You know, and, and how do you convey the love of God? And that's part of my message is from the Old Testament when Jacob was fleeing uh, from, he had, he'd, he'd ripped off his brother. Yeah. And he had deceived, deceived his dad, and he was fleeing for his life. His brother says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill you. And he could have, too. He and, was a mighty and, warrior. And on the a way, hunter. he laid down his head, and it said he put a, a rock under his head for a pillow. I was told that that wasn't actually a pillow, but he had actually taken the stones from the altar that were in that same place where Abraham was prepared to sacrifice his son Isaac. And Isaac was a willing sacrifice. And it was in the very same spot. And in that very same spot today is known as the Temple Mount, where the Holy of Holies was established in the, in the first and the second temple. An amazing place. But he had this dream of this stairway to heaven. And he saw angels going up and descending, and the top of the, of the ladder was God himself. And then as we fast forward to the New Testament, it clearly says in John that Jesus is the stairway. And so not only did God appear to Jacob way back then in that place, Jesus says, there's going to come a time when you won't have to worship me at a place. You will worship me in spirit and in truth. And Jesus is with you and with you and with right. me and with Dawn, everyone. He's with us and he is our stairway. He is our redeemer. He is the one who sacrificed his very life. And, and even like as Isaac was going to be uh, sacrificed on the altar, I mean, Jesus, the ram in the thicket, I mean, he was that lamb in the thicket, you know, so it's like, you know, he provided the exact sacrifice. Well, what did he say? I will provide for myself a sacrifice. Whoa, mm -hmm. And he man. did. And, and then himself. kind of as I look at that picture um, that um, Ernie was mentioning, uh, the passion, I think about um, the gentleman that I met, Kamal Samal, who was raised from birth. You know, he ended up working for Yasser Arafat, and I think at six or seven, he was portrayed as like a little shepherd boy leading these little sheep into Israel. But underneath of it were ammunitions and bombs, like so that they could kill um, Jews. And the idea was like he needed to kill as many Jews or Christians as he could, you know, because Allah would be really happy with him. And then there's a whole story that goes along, but at the point that he meets Jesus um, in his bedroom looking to the east. And so anyway, I mean, Kamal has his Glock, you know, pointed at his mouth and he's going to take his life. And Jesus said, no, no, Kamal, I already died for you so that you don't have to die. Yeah. And so it's like, no, we don't have to, we don't have to like pay the price that Jesus has already he paid. paid. <coughs> he paid the price. Amen. Wow. It's, it's just almost too good to be true, but we know it's true. It's true. It is. Yeah. yeah. So we hope that you know that as we open up the mics and we pray and we appeal to you to turn to God. Yeah. I, I think there's only two people, two types of people in the world, the righteous and the wicked. Mm -hmm. And and how do we become righteous? It's not by obeying all the rules. It's right. by in faith. He says it's, it's your faith that establishes you as being a part of my kingdom. And the wicked are those who refuse and have their hearts cold. And we pray for your heart. We pray for your heart to soften because only God can save you. We can't do it. Right. And so we want to be faithful and we are delighted to be able to open up the microphones and make the appeal as, as many times as we can. The other, the, other, the other side of the coin of faith is fear. And I was just reminded of an acronym <clears throat> about fear and it's false evidence appearing real. So when you're in fear, you're looking at all the lies of the enemy and you're thinking, oh my gosh, this is real, and it puts you in fear. But faith, 
no matter what you're facing <clears throat> uh, equals peace. I mean, it's, it's so amazing. That's how I know God's real because his peace dwells in me through the hardest and most terrible times of my life where I've trusted in him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, so it is real. I mean, there there is no doubt that God is real and that he loves you. And when you hear us talking like this or when you hear a sermon on the radio or even if you listen to the station and you, you're hearing a, a song that's worshiping the Lord and something's happening in your heart that's overriding your brain, um, that's the Holy Spirit knocking at your door because it's truth. And every religion out there has an element of his truth in it because that's what gets your attention. So when you're hearing things like this, you're being stirred. Now, we cannot make you believe and we cannot save you, but the Holy Spirit is using us to, as, a, as a vehicle to deliver his word and our testimony into your heart. And he's the one stirring and shaking you going, hey, this is real. These guys listen to what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage you today. Today is a day. You know, none of us is guaranteed tomorrow. And, and then this is the way. And, and hell is definitely real. But today is a day of salvation. Today is a day to put your faith and trust in what Jesus did for you. We bring nothing to him but just our obedience like, Lord, and repentance is changing your mind. It's like, Lord, I've lived my way all this time against you and ran from you and rejected you and said, I'll do it later. But today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that your name can be written in the book of life. Today can be the very same, the very day when all the turmoil and all the uncertainty and everything going on <clears throat> in your life um, can be dealt with with peace. And then God will start illuminating his truth into your life but it's it's putting your faith in jesus christ and what he did on the cross you don't have to understand it you don't have to be a the theologian you just have to believe faith. romans 10 10 faith. 10 9 and 10 if you believe and that jesus died for you on the cross and you ask for forgiveness and then he will come into your life and your name will be written in the lamb's book of life salvation is really that simple um, it's just putting your faith in what he did and then hooking up and reading your Bible and getting involved in a church that's teaching the word. And there's many, many churches in this area that would love to uh, have you as part of their program. You know, But God will lead you. That's all down there. But right now, your salvation is the most important thing in God's, not, not your bills, not your family, nothing. The most important thing to God right now is you and putting your trust and faith in him. And then you start to fulfill who you were created to be in the first place. And so. the wonderful thing is that sometimes I'll have somebody say to me, oh, you're a religious person, right? <laughs> and I go, well, actually, um, I prefer to think of myself as a Christian who knows Jesus personally. Amen. Because a religious person knows all about Jesus, and then they feel like they have to do all of these really hard i have to do this and i have to do that and i have to do this exactly. other thing you know so it's all about kind of a legalistic kind of thing and that's not the relationship that you know like to have jesus as a personal savior mm -hmm. an intimate personal savior and so i don't have to do anything sometimes i don't i mean you know i can do anything i want to anything I want to but lots of times I just don't want to do those things and so Jesus wants for you to have you know to have a personal relationship with him yep. because he knows every hair on your head every single one if you yank one out he still knows how many are there so there's nothing about you that isn't important to him that's right um, you've been listening to Colleen McNeil there and Ernie Moquin and we are about uh done with our half hour Ernie I'm wondering if you would pray for um, the people that maybe have been listening uh, Colleen you prayed for our nation and and for our our president our government and Ernie would you would you pray for the people who would be listening locally? okay if I have to <laughs> 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 oh, so Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your joy that fills our heart. Uh, it's so wonderful to be here this morning with Colleen and Scott. And uh, uh, it wasn't planned, but Lord, you, you just are so wonderful. And right now, I just lift up everybody listening, either live right now or um, on the, if they're live streaming or if they hear this later. Um, but I just pray for you right now specifically as an individual before the Lord that you would surrender your life. And surrender sounds like a scary word, but it's actually one of the most beautiful words in the Bible when we surrender to the one who created us. 
So I just pray today that you would make that choice for Jesus, that you would just commit. And uh, at the end of the day, really, what do you have to lose? Um, you have nothing to lose but everything to gain. So today, I just pray for your salvation, that you would put your faith and trust in Jesus because he loves you, he cares for you, and it is a relationship. It is not a something that we do. And we're called to good works, but we're not saved by him, but that's another whole topic. But right now, I just pray for you as an individual before the Lord that today is the day that your name would be written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that you would make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, that you would invite him in, because he says he stands at the door and knocks, and he waits for you to open. So open that door to Jesus today. Surrender your life to him, and oh my gosh, the great adventure will truly begin in your life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. And Lord, I want to also pray for our our state of Oregon. Yes. Uh, we pray that instead of being known as a place that is uh, anti-God and for drugs and everything that that incurs i pray that there would be a great wave of revival in our state yes, yes. Lord, thank you and uh, bless our leaders lord with wisdom and your righteousness in jesus name amen and amen all right well uh, it's eight o'clock uh, again my phone number if you want to reach out would be 541-270-7855 that's scott albright or you could call the radio station and thank you, too, for both being here. What a blessing. It's, it's always a joy. Yeah. Oh, man. We'll be back Monday, Lord willing. And yep. thank you, thank you, Dan, for uh, tipping us off to the wonderful adventure hey, coming up. Hey, that sneaky yeah. little fellow. That sneaky little guy. And <laughs> I actually answered the phone. <laughs> <laughs> so God bless you. We're going to continue. Um, you love this song, uh, Colleen, so we're going to play it next. This is Chris Tomlin, Whom Shall I Fear, the God of Angel Armies. This is KWPBLP Newport, Oregon. <laughs> 